Hey everyone, Selena here, Selena Baca Crochet. I am super excited to be here with you guys live because I just finished posting the final project in my latest book, Crochet in a Weekend, to Ravelry. I love to do that um, so that you can see all of the patterns are, that are in this book. So I just wanted to take a minute and kind of go through those 29 patterns with you guys. If you have any questions, just go on ahead and post them and I'll get to them as soon as I see them. Now, 29 patterns is a whole lot for a crochet book. So we might be here for just a little bit, all right? So again, when you're when you're here, come on over, say hey, say hello, tell me where you're viewing from. I'd love to hear from you. So Crochet in a Weekend is a book that I actually finished in 2020. I finished it a long time ago. Here it is. I actually, I have a copy in my hands right here, but it is not scheduled to be out until February 22nd. So, you know, it's, I think if you pre-ordered it, it may be coming in soon. I saw that somebody posted that they got theirs already. Uh, but again, it's still only currently listed on pre-order, but you should be able to get it anywhere books are sold. Um, or you can go to your local library and ask them to, you know, put it on the shelves. Any way you like to enjoy books, you should be able to find a copy, okay? Now, again, I love to post all of my projects for books on Ravelry because I want to know what I'm getting. Not only that, but I want details. I want to know what's in the book. I want to know what sizes. I want to know what yarn. I want to know who's working on it. All of that kind of stuff, okay? So there are some patterns in here that are oldies and goodies because, um, and there are some patterns that I was able to publish early. So there's some here that may look a little familiar to you, but over the last, I think three or four days, there were like 13 new patterns that I posted. So all 29 are available here. Okay, first pattern, oldie but a goodie is the Warlock Wrap. I first published this back in 2017. So um, I put it in this book because it is truly one of my favorites. And true to the book name Crochet in a Weekend, this is totally something that you can make in a weekend. Now, I told you guys this uh, a little while ago when I was telling you about the book Crochet in a Weekend. Arguably, it's things that you should be able to complete in 12 hours or less. I know everybody crochets at different paces, but I really tried very hard to make sure that everything in here, again, could be done in 12 hours or less. So Warlock Wrap, absolutely on the top of that list. Uh, this is the first pattern that I made specifically for this book. It is the Weekend Blanket Wrap. Um, this was kind of my inspiration for this entire book. It's something that I sat down, I made it in a weekend, and it's still one of my favorite things to wear to this day. As you can see, I took like, a t I just felt so fancy in it. We just took all the pictures in it. I loved it so much. So um, definitely something you can make in a weekend. I love how giant it is. It's this giant oversized, you know, triangle scarf that, you know, I literally, it looks like I'm wearing a poncho. That's how big it is. And every time I wear it, I get tons of compliments. All right. Sun Kiss tank top. This is something that I made years ago, back in 2018, it says was the first time I published this. Gosh, when did I first make this? I think I first made this. Yeah. Just cause I was like, this is what I'm doing and I'm doing it. And I like it. And then my friends at Craftsy were like, we love it too, make it for us, let's do a kit. So it's something that, you know, we just kind of keep going back to. Um, so many people love it. It's very flattering. It's it's fantastic. I'm patting myself on the back over here. In terms of it being a crochet tank top, I think it's just such a simple, beautiful design. And it's something that I really love making and I really love wearing it. Um, so, um, I'm just, I'm very proud of this design. So again, not new to this publication. It's not new, but it's an oldie and a goodie and absolutely something that you can crochet in a weekend if you want to. All right. Next on my list, low tide shrug, um, something I made a couple years ago, but I thought it fit perfectly in this category. Um, cause it's, it's that beautiful lace pattern, typically lace patterns like this that, you know, the open stitches, it's, um, it's not very time consuming. So you kind of get into the groove of a pattern and, you know, you can just kind of keep trucking along, which is another thing that I love about this book. True to Selena Baca crochet fashion, everything in here is, um, it, 
it ca you can catch on quite quickly, right? So I love different stitches, I love different fabrics, but typically most of the construction styles in this book are pretty easy to work up. A lot of things are worked top down, and that's so they're super easy to size. You can totally try them on as you go. You can measure as you go. And that way, whatever it is that you're making, because this is a garment book, you can immediately see if you've made the right yarn choice, if you're using the right hook, if you like the colors you're using, you can immediately get some kind of feedback. And that way you're not finishing something and trying it on and going, well, I just wasted a bunch of time. I don't like doing that. So I really want to make sure the construction styles um, avoid any kind, you know, any, uh, you know, you wasting time or yarn. So what I love about this is that you can totally make this fitted or you can make it oversized if you want. Um, and it's made in different sections and that way you're not, and everything in this book is made in sections, even the largest items, even the big sweaters. And I did that on purpose, and that way you can make these different sections, and then you can seam or sew or crochet them together, and you're not kind of being stuck at home on the couch making this giant thing. So I really wanted each one of these items to be portable as well. So again, you can totally make this fitted, you can make it oversized, it looks fantastic either way. All right, Gemstone Poncho. This is, you know, I've got a lot of favorites in the, this book. Arguably, everything is my favorite, but this is probably one that I really super love. It's the Gemstone Poncho. You guys know me. I, I love the ponchos. I love layering looks, and I love the yarn for this. Just the colors are beautiful. I love that I have that double knot fringe on there. It's so fun to make. It's really easy to get started. It's you know, almost everything in this book is, you know, you, after the first few rounds or rows, you've got it. You don't even have to look at the pattern anymore. So I love simplistic repeats like that. Um, you can see already that so many different yarns, so many different colors were, were worked up in this. And I don't think you can make a wrong choice. It's a fantastic poncho. All right, next, Kobu Top. Uh, side note, side note, did you guys know that I goofed and I actually have two patterns total because I've got a few hundred now that are called Kobu top. So a little, little error on my part. So yes, I have more than one Kobu top. Um, and this is the second one. Uh, I really love this design because again, it's, you know, it, it can be fitted. It can be oversized. You can't make a wrong choice in terms of color. It really just kind of looks fantastic on so many different body types and body shapes. Um, and it's a it's a lot of fun to make. It's another one. It's made from the top down. Uh, it's made in rows on the top. You can absolutely try it on as you go. And then the bottom, the, the skirt portion, the torso portion of this is made in joined rounds. So it's super easy to construct. Uh, this book does not have a lot of complicated increasing and decreasing. I worked really hard to make sure that a lot of these shapes were squares and rectangles that were, um, you know, uh, that were put together in a way that gives them a lot of shape. And that way it doesn't look like you're just wearing a square or rectangle. All right, next one, Speckle Sweater. Do you guys remember this one? I released it a couple of years ago. Um, I, this is, this is a really fun project that's worked from the top down. I love the stitch pattern. Um, you, you can use lots of, you can use solid yarn, you can use variegated yarn, you can use self-striping, you can use, you know, ombres, so many different fantastic options for this. And I heard so many people say that this was their first sweater and they loved the results and they always got compliments on it. Because I wanted everything to be, you know, 12 hours or less, I did give my speckle sweater um, shorter sleeves. So mine kind of hit above the elbow. But if you have more yarn and you have more time, you can make this longer in the sleeves. You can make it shorter in the sleeves. It's absolutely customizable. And almost everything in this book that's made top down, you can absolutely customize in terms of size. So if you want this to be longer, easy. If you want the sleeves to be different, longer, shorter, totally easy. You can absolutely do, do that without any complicated mathing of any kind. No equations, right? 
All right, date night poncho. I have to say I'm in love with the yarn that I used for this. I used Lion Brand Date Night. That's why I called it Date Night. Um, I name my patterns after yarn sometimes because um, I really want people to see yarns uh, well, hold on. Let me back. Let me backtrack just for a minute. Sometimes we see yarns and we love them and we're like, what do we do with this? And so we just kind of do random Google searches. So if you have Lion Brand date night and you love it and you want to know what to do with it, maybe this will kind of come up in a search result and you'll go, of course, I'll make that with this. Right. Um, because that's what I did. I saw this yarn. It's beautiful. It feels great. It looks great. Um, and I really super love the stitch pattern with this. It was just so much fun to work up that stitch pattern. Uh, all this is is a rectangle that you, you make your rectangle and then you seam it together on one side. You leave a head hole. <laughs> you leave the head hole. I'm so technical. And that's it. Um, this is also a fantastic book to dabble in. Um, dabble. This is how we dabble. <laughs> to dabble in blocking, wet blocking, swatching, dry blocking, all of those fancy terms that you hear. This is a fantastic book to try those things out. So don't be afraid to do that. Picnic vest. This is one that I made. Uh, let's see, when did I make this? 2020, July 2020. And I've made so many different versions of this. I absolutely love this vest. It's two rectangles that are seamed together and then sewn. So if you can make rectangles, if you've ever made a blanket, you can make most of the items in this in this book. And again, I really tried hard to make sure that the yarns that I chose and the stitch patterns that I chose didn't make these look like, oh, it is just a rectangle. Oh, it is just squares. You know, I don't like complicated increasing and decreasing. I don't like complicated math. Um, and so anytime I can avoid that, by pairing together a great yarn with a great stitch pattern, I'm gonna do that. So hopefully you guys enjoy this too. So many different yarns and colors are represented here. And I really just had a lot of fun making this. It was very satisfying. Lotus Blossom Tunic. I fell in love with this Lotus Blossom kind of stitch fabric, right? I, right? Like you guys know. Um, and this is actually, this was inspired after my Lotus Blossom tote bag. I just loved that motif so much that I wanted to see it in some kind of tunic. So I did use, let's see, Lion Brand Touch of Alpaca because I envisioned this to be, you know, I, you can wear this in the fall and, you know, put some jeans under it and like maybe a long sleeve shirt or something like that. But this and so many other patterns in this book Maybe you see it in Lion Brand Touch of Alpaca and you're like, mm, you know what? I'm going to make that in a cotton or I'm going to make that in a lighter weight yarn. It's super easy for so many patterns in this book. Like this one, you can choose a different yarn weight. You can use a different yarn type. And because these are worked from the top down in rows and there's no complicated increasing or decreasing, you can absolutely make substitutions like that and still make something that you really love. So this is absolutely something that, or this is one great example of something that you can wear uh, maybe in the fall or in the winter and maybe use like a wool blend or an acrylic or something like that. And if you want something lighter and breezier and, you know, a little more, a little, a little lighter and breezier, then you can maybe use a lighter yarn or a cotton yarn or something or some kind of plant-based Um yarn and really have fantastic results. So have fun playing around. Mauve cardigan. I loved the construction of this. Again, I wanted to take simple shapes and I wanted to, I wanted things to look way more complicated than they actually were. And this is a great example of that. Um, so this is three pieces. This entire cardigan is just three pieces. So it's a left side, a right side, that left side and right side are the exact same pattern and they're a T shape. And that T shape is folded over and sewn and that creates the sleeve and uh, part of the panel. And then those two sides are joined together with this beautiful pineapple strip right here. I had so much fun playing around with that pineapple strip and I think that it was just a fantastic complement to this particular kind of stitch pattern. Um, I really love this stitch pattern and I'm definitely going to do more with it. 
Um, it just, it kind of looks like little eyelets. It's reversible and it works really, really well with lots of different colors, lots of different fibers. So this is another fantastic example of something that you can play around with a little bit in terms of size of yarn, in terms of the size that you make. Maybe you want it to be fitted. Maybe you want it to be oversized. It's, uh, you know, it's really pretty versatile in, in terms of what you think looks good. So it's not one of those finicky things to where you have to use the exact yarn. You have to make a gauge swatch. It has to be exact. A lot of these things are very forgiving. All right, taupe tea is next. I called it the taupe tea because I think I use taupe colored yarn. I started running out of names here, people. <laughs> and again, this is, um, these are two rectangles that are sewn together. Uh, so super simplistic. It's rose. It's this big, giant, open stitch work. Um, and I love that the stitches are going horizontally. So even though I created this stitch vertically, um, I turn the fabric so that way you can kind of see it going outward um, horizontally. And I think it looks absolutely fantastic. They look like teardrops going outward. I really love that it's a V-neck. And... Um, I think V-necks can be very flattering. I chose to make mine super oversized and then um, I did block my fabric. So I do recommend blocking your fabric and, and that's especially if you think something looks stiff or if you think that it should be a little more flowy and fluid. I think blocking your fabric really relaxes the, the fibers, it relaxes the stitches and it really makes things just kind of cascade a little bit more. Um, and then I kind of, um, I, again, I made mine a little larger and I encourage you to make things that are oversized, which is going to be super easy for you to do. Because again, these are all simplistic shapes, squares, rectangles. So you can absolutely go, well, I want mine to fit oversized like Selena's right here. And so I want it to go from my shoulder to my elbow or a little past what's my measurement. Now I know what to do. But you can absolutely make things a little more fitted. Uh, I had fantastic pattern testers working on this, so I have lots of different examples that you can see already. So again, this is another great example of something that it can be a little more fitted, so a little more um, closer fitting to your body, or it can be oversized, and that means you know it's it's larger than your actual body measurements. And you can choose you know what style you think looks best. All right, are we halfway through? Maybe. All right, a more top. I keep saying, I love this one. I used Red Heart Amore for this, which is that um, I've used this yarn quite a few times in the past. I, I've made a few patterns for Red Heart with this, and they asked me to make a cardigan with it a couple years ago, and I just fell in love with the feel of it. I think a lot of people, um, uh, they see this yarn and they feel it in the store, and they're like, this feels like, I think another yarn company has the same yarn and they call it butter, feels like butter, which is, it does. It feels like kittens. It feels like butter. It is so soft. But what I love about this yarn um, is that the construction is is uh, of the yarn is, is pretty sturdy. Sometimes when we get those softer novelty yarns, like they're not really as sturdy and, and they make me feel a little uncomfortable. But this one felt great. I think it looked great. I love the color, and I think that this is one of those tops that um, you can dress up or dress down. I just wore mine with a top, a tank top and some, you guys laughed at me the other day, I said some fancy pants, but you know, you can wear it with jeans, but, you know, whatever you wanna wear it with. This is another one where you can absolutely customize the sleeves. I had mine hit to the elbow. You can make them shorter, you can make them longer. I made my top um, not very long, so really it just kind of went to about my hips. But if you want your top to be longer, if you want it to be a tunic, if you want it to be shorter, it's super easy to customize that. This is another one that's made from the top down. So it's you can get started and measure as you go. And after just a few rows, you can absolutely decide if you like the yarn, if you like the color, and if the fit is going to be what you're going for. Next is the Grige Cocoon. Guys, I cannot tell you how much I love this. I actually haven't even worn this in two years because I was so in love with the design that I was like, it has to be under wraps. I'm just so, so, so in love with this design. 
I used super bulky yarn with this and it's really just a back loop only kind of stitch. So front loop, back loop only, super easy to do. And it's just a giant T shape. So it's a really big rectangle and then it's a big square and then it's two seams. So I was super excited about the construction for this because again, if you can make a blanket, you can make something like this. I think that the super bulky yarn really makes this this big plush item that you can wear in the fall and in the winter. Um, and I like that the sleeves, um, you know, it has these sleeves. It doesn't have sleeves, but it just kind of has these openings. So it looks like you're what you have sleeves, right? I like that this hits at the elbow. It can even go a little farther. Uh, if you want. And this is another one that comes in, it comes in two sizes. So it's pretty simplistic in terms of how you can size this to make it fit how you want it to fit. I also used a really big hook for this. And that way, because it's this big bulky yarn, you don't want a bulky stiff fabric. You want your bulky yarn to really have some fluidity. And so I think using a really big hook with that helps give you that. So I had so much fun making this. And now that it's out, I'm going to be wearing this thing. It is just so comfortable. It feels like a blanket. I love wearing crochet that feels or clothes that feel like I'm just kind of wearing a blanket. But again, that fabric, it just has this beautiful ribbing that looks fantastic. So I'm pretty proud of this one. And I hope you guys love it too. All right. Peaceful Earth Shawl. Um, I am super duper in love with Lion Brand Shawl in a Ball. I have made tons of items with this yarn. I think it is gorgeous. I love how light and lacy it is. And I love these long um, color repeats that it has, right? So that way, whenever you're creating the fabric, it just has this automatic striping in it, this automatic color blocking that just looks divine. So I called this the Peaceful Earth Shawl because that's the color that I used. Again, I ran out of names, guys, so I wasn't too creative with this. I just went with the basics. But the stitch pattern in this looks so geometric that um, I thought it just was the perfect complement for this yarn. Um, something that I'll note here, but it's true for almost every item in this book. When I designed all of the items in this book and when I was thinking about um, adding pieces to my wardrobe, right? I really wanted to create crochet pieces that I would actually wear and that were simple to, you know, pair an outfit around. I'm a super simplistic person. I wear jeans. I wear jean sundresses. I wear tank tops. I'm super basic. I probably have like five outfits that I just kind of put in rotation. So as we're looking through all of these, I really only went with a handful of outfits and that was it. So everything that I designed, I wanted to make sure that the yarns and the colors and the items themselves could just be added to the, the wardrobe that I already had. And so I feel like tank tops and, and jeans and maybe a sundress, that's what we already have in our wardrobe anyway. And so I really wanted to, to show that these crochet pieces, um, I want them to look like they fit in your wardrobe in very modern and fun and comfortable ways. So I hope you guys dig it. And I don't want you guys to think shawl and go, shawls are for old people. I want you to see this cute little jean sundress and see this shawl. And I want you guys to go, oh, all right, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> okay, next is the True Boo Top. Guys, if you have not used True Boo yarn yet, you are missing out. Snag it. It is absolutely fantastic. It feels like silk. It is so fantastic to work with. And it is so drapey and so luxurious and so fluidy that it is just amazing to make um, like lacy tops like this. Here's that sundress again. So again, don't feel like I can't wear lacy tops. I'm wearing it just over a sundress. You can put it over a tank top. You can put it over a dress. It is a fantastic just kind of uh, layering piece. And again, it feels gorgeous. It feels so fantastic. This is two rectangles that are cleverly put together. And that way you guys can have this beautiful, beautiful top. This is another item that absolutely needs to be blocked. But if you guys are afraid of blocking, 
I've got an article at the American Crochet Association that really breaks it down. So you guys go, oh, that's all it is? That's not hard. I can totally do that. And you can do it with really no equipment. You can really do it, you know, kind of the easy, basic way. You know, the bathroom blocking. That's that's me. That's where I'm at in my bathtub. So the yarn is very economical. It comes in fantastic colors. The yarn feels so luxurious. People are going to be like, did you get that from Macy's? Did you get that from Bloomingdale's? I guarantee you people are going to love this. Um, this is absolutely one of those oversized looks. So there's no complicated increasing or decreasing on this. I did want to make this go all the way to my elbows and that way it gives this appearance of sleeves. And I like that it's it's not very long. Um, so it's just long enough to look like this fancy top that I've got over a jean sundress. So I hope you guys enjoy it. And definitely try True Boo yarn. It's economical. It feels fantastic. And you can easily make something like this with very little yarn. All right, next is the ZZ Twist Shrug. I use ZZ Twist yarn from Lion Brand for a few projects, and this is one of them. What I love about this is that it is made in rows from elbow to elbow. So you just make a really long rectangle. Uh, the cuffs, like the sleeve portions, those are um, those are going to be a little bit more narrow. And then where that shrug is that goes over the body, um, the, the stitches and the fabric are quite larger. So it's kind of one of those things to where it's narrow and then it gets bigger in the middle. And so it just kind of creates this, this odd shaped rectangle, but there's no complicated increasing or decreasing again for this. I really love this yarn because it's very soft. It's very comfortable. It's really nice to work with. And I think that it creates a fantastic fabric. Here I am again, just wearing it with a, a jean sundress. So here I've taken the same jean sundress and, you know, I've paired it with different crochet tops and it looks like a completely different outfit every single time. So you guys can do that too. Whew. All right. Next is the hempster tank top. Um, this one does have a little bit of increasing in it. So this one, uh, but it's with this just very simplistic fabric. It's just double crochets and chains. So it's really simplistic to see where those increases are. So you guys can really see right here that the top start, it's from the top and it's worked down. So it's, you know, you can kind of size it as you go and you can make it longer if you want. I think this is even something that you can make into a tunic, you can make into a dress, we can wear it to the pool. It's super versatile. So what I did was, is I started up here um, and then it does kind of increase on the sides to a certain point. I'm out of frame. And then it just goes down. So there is a little bit of increasing here, but it's not complicated. Every single row or round comes with a complete stitch count. And that way you can double check your work to make sure that whatever you've done matches the pattern. So there shouldn't be any issue there. Uh, so what I did for the sides here is I made this really long cord. And then I, I braided it through both sides of this top, the front and the back. And then I tied it. And I just thought that was such a, like, such a nice little addition to this and just kind of a pop of something different. And I thought it was really fitting with this particular open style top. If you want to omit that, though, and just either crochet or sew the sides together, you can absolutely do that. So this neckline is not a square neckline. It is a rounded neckline. And it was really fun for me to make this. And I really hope that you enjoy creating, you know, that, that different kind of neckline just to give it a little bit of shape. Whew. All right. What is next? What's next is the Higgy scarf. Have you guys used the yarn Red Heart Higgy yet? I'm probably saying Higgy wrong. I know that there's another way to say it, but I'm being very literal in the pronunciation. Um, I really love this scarf because that Higgy yarn, it's kind of a bigger yarn. It is a bulky weight. And then it also has, it's not eyelash, but it's kind of like eyelash and it's very, very soft. It's very easy to work with this particular yarn. So it's not hard to see your stitches or your fabric. And then it gives you this really beautiful, comfortable feel. Uh, my son actually liked this so much. He was like, mom, make this, but like in a blanket, like a sleeping bag. 
And he really loved that fabric so, so much. So what I love about this scarf is that it's actually created in a tube. Um, so you're working a tube, just a circle, and then you're adding rounds to that circle and it can be as long as you want. I ended up making my 90 inches long and it is six inches wide or 12 inches around. So it's this really big tube and it's really long. I closed up the ends with some tassels. You can totally leave those off though if you're not into the tassels or you can even sew the ends together and make a really big tube scarf. Again, you can make this long if you want, you can make it short if you want. What I love about this tube style scarf is that typically with scarves, their they're rectangles or squares, but they're flat. And so, you know, they lay flat, they, you know, you have to kind of, you know, wrap them around your neck a few times for them to really have any kind of bulk. And really this kind of, it's like having twice the bulk but because it's in that tube form, it's already, you know, creating this bulk that I really love and I found very cozy. But because it's a tube, especially with those um, tassels at the ends, it makes that tube lay flat. And so it's giving you that bundling without having to have a lot of extra fabric that you have to, you know, kind of bundle around your neck. So I thought that that was kind of a clever um difference of construction and it was really comfortable as well and again i highly recommend this yarn but this is another one of those projects that if you want to use a different yarn you want to use a different color you want to play with it you absolutely can it's really easy to do all right next on my list is this ombre wrap i have been in love with the lion brand mandala cakes that have been coming out and ombre is kind of one of my new favorites if you guys have not picked up Lion Brand Mandala Ombre yet, I highly recommend it. Um, it's a worsted yarn. It's very soft. It's very squishy and it's super dense. And the yarn colors, as you can see here, create this ombre effect where it has these big blocks of color, um, color blocking. So this particular, um, it is a triangle scarf, but it's worked from end to end. So there is some, you know, when you're starting at one end, you're increasing until you come to you know, your largest point, and then you're decreasing. So even though there's some increasing and decreasing here, it is not going to be complicated. I just recommend that you put stitch markers on the first and last, the top of the first and the last stitch. And once you kind of get the hang of where you increase and where you de decrease, it's something that you can absolutely just kind of watch a movie. You can be out with your friends. You can be at the park. You can do whatever you want to do in your life, and you can absolutely work this up. Also, this particular yarn, again, it feels fantastic. So if you see it in a store, I think I picked mine up at Walmart. If you see it in a store, I absolutely recommend trying this, especially for something like this, which is worn around your neck. All right, next is the roving wrap. Uh, one of my pattern testers, I've got a private pattern testing group, especially for my book, and she said, mm, I don't, I've never made cables before. I don't know. I'm not really comfortable with that. And so when I was making, when I was designing the items for this book, I had this Bernat roving yarn. It's super bulky. Um, and it's just, it's really big and plush and bulky and it's fantastic for stitch definition. And it really highlights stitches really well. And it highlights fabric really well. So I decided this was a fantastic project to introduce cables for people who've never made cables. Um, so um, hopefully this will be a fantastic project for you to try those cables, maybe to try a big yarn. If you want to use a different yarn, this is a, you know, very easy to, to substitute here. And, and I really hope that when, when you try something like this, It'll just show you, oh, okay, all right, I can I can work different stitches. You know, it's not so scary, and I can try them on a project like this. It's very approachable, and I have something that I love when I'm done. So hopefully you guys try it out, and you super love it too. All right, next is a vest. Of course I made a vest. I had a lot of fun making this vest because it is worked from the top down. There's increasing on the sides. So while it starts at the nape of the neck up here, it increases on the sides to create kind of a triangle look and then it goes flat. 
Um, I did use a uh, Bernat Handicrafter for this, which is a yarn that you can absolutely substitute in so many different ways because it's a worsted yarn. So after you create the, the body portion of this, then the front portion kind of, you know, it's, and this entire thing is worked in rows, so it's very simplistic. Um, then, then the front portion, that collar portion is added on, and that's what adds the sleeves. Here I am wearing that same sundress again. Are you guys catching on that how versatile these items are? Because I'm wearing my same sundress with this too. Uh, so it was super simplistic to make. I used a stitch that left a beautiful edging. And that way it's really, you know, the, the fabric is really uh, pleasing. But then it also, it ends with this really beautiful scalloped uh, look and it's all part of the fabric itself. So I didn't really have to do anything extra to really finish it off. That same beautiful scallop stitch is also used around the collar. So you're going to see that beautiful edging. So it doesn't look unfinished. And it was super fun to make. All right, next color made easy cardigan. This was another, gosh, I love this one so much. Um, it's all just rectangles and squares and I made giant ballooned um, sleeves. Uh, but notice that even though those sleeves are giant and ballooned, they do have this cuff on them. Um, these sleeves are worked in rows. Everything about this is worked in rows. Nothing about this is worked in the round. This fabric has a very clear right side, which has all of this fantastic ribbing on it, and a back side or a wrong side, which is pretty flat. Um, so it's really simplistic and satisfying to see that pattern emerge in the fabric. And even though it's this big bulky sweater, you can absolutely make this entire thing in different pieces, measure as you go to make sure that it's going to be the size that you want it to be. And then you seam the entire thing together. So it's not this big bulky thing that you have to carry around until you finish. Everything is in these little bite sized pieces and then you me again, you measure it to make sure, is this going to be the fit that I want? Are the sleeves going to be long enough? Is the, the, the cardigan going to be long enough? All of that is very easy to measure as you go and customize. All right, next is the charisma pullover. I did make this in more of a fall look. So I did use kind of a bulky um, acrylic yarn, but this is absolutely something that you can make for warmer weather if you want. So uh, what I love about this is that, you guys guessed it, it's work from the top down. And I created it um, with this beautiful light ripple kind of chevron fabric just in the center. And I did use back loop only on this so that you can really get more texture on the front. Uh, I'm just wearing jeans and a tank top. I chose a really basic color. Um, but really you can have a lot of fun with this. If you chose different colors, if you chose maybe, you know, a lighter yarn or something like that. And it's so easy to measure as you go to make something that you love that's going to fit you. All right. Just a few more left guys. If you're just now joining, come on over, say, Hey, say hello. Tell me where you're viewing from. We'll give you a shout out in just a little bit. Uh, this is a infinity cowl that I made with super bulky yarn. Um, and it does use the puff stitch. So I'm, I'm a huge fan of the puff stitch. I think it's so beautiful and I love creating the puff stitch, especially with yarn that has great definition. When I love the look of a strand of yarn, when I love that look and I want to see more of it, then the puff stitch is a great way to see it because it really kind of highlights those strands of yarn. What I love about this is that Again, it is made with super bulky yarn, but you can go smaller if you want. You don't have to make this giant thing of a cowl if you don't want to. You can totally go smaller if you want. Um, and this entire um, cowl is worked in continuous rounds, so there isn't going to be a seam for this. And it's very easy to, you know, get started and then just kind of keep going. I mean, the pattern is super simplistic because it really is just uh, a few basic stitches that are being used here, including that puff stitch. You can wear it super long, like I have right here. You can double it over. And if you make it as large as I made it, I don't have a picture of it, 
well, I've got a really sad, like, I just made this. Who wants to test it? Like one of those backyard pictures. But another thing that I did was you can, when you double this over or not, it's big enough for you to put it over your head and it looks like a hood. So that's definitely another look uh, for this particular kind of project that makes it even more versatile and really cool looking. So if you like things like that, definitely check this out. All right, next is the Katami Poncho. I think the color of yarn that I used was Katami, and that's how I came up with this very clever name. This is Lion Brand Heartland Thick and Quick Yarn. Um, you guys know me. I like super basic, simplistic things, and I like to do different... I like to have different styles with those super basic things. So really, um, I was inspired by a solid stitch work granny square. And I was so inspired by that that I thought, I want to make, I want to take that shape, but I want it to be like, I want a rectangle uh, granny type thing. So this does not use the classic granny stitch, but that's right, that, you know, that, gr that square kind of granny uh, motif, but with solid stitching, that was kind of my inspiration for this. So it does start in the center and works outward, but it starts in the center, leaving a big gap for the head. It's got a head hole. Um, and then it just has four corners. So it is solid stitch work. It is this big, bulky, cozy yarn. Um, and then really it's just increasing it four different corners, creating this fantastic pullover poncho. Um, I'm just wearing a long sleeve shirt and jeans, so it's super easy for you to come up with a classic uh, outfit with this particular project. So I hope you guys dig it. Um, and uh, with this poncho, another thing that you can do if you want is you can line up the edges. And instead of it being an open poncho like this, you can seam up the sides to create sleeves or armholes. So that's another thing you can do if you want. All right, next, this was one of my pattern testers. Uh, all the pattern testers that I had, this was one of their favorites. They loved this design so much, and it was really hard for me not to release this one early. Um, I used Lion Brand Scarfy for this because I love the feel of that yarn. I love the look of the yarn. I love working with this yarn, and I love the color variation in this. It's so fantastic. This is just squares and rectangles. But I did use this really interesting, like, um, it was, I want to call it like a sideways stitch. I don't know. I don't quite know what to call it. Um, but it was really easy to do. And it gave such a fantastic texture to where when you're looking at this particular item, it almost looks like corner to corner crochet, but it's not worked from corner to corner. Um, it's worked back and forth in rows but it does kind of have that corner to corner look to it. So I had a lot of fun doing this and I love that it's got, um, it's got all these different pieces that you create in rows separately and then you seam it together. But then I did decide to put this really long strip of um, crochet fabric in the front to create this fold over cowl. So that's just kind of a different um, fabric piece, a different element to this that I really liked. All right, two left, guys. Here we have it, the tw the tweed cardigan. Um, I love this so much um, for so many reasons. I love this because, again, it's created in different pieces. It's just rectangles and squares. No complicated increasing or decreasing here. I use Patton's North America Shetland Chunky Tweeds. So the yarn itself is a tweed yarn. I use this beautiful you know, green color, and it does have these different flecks of yarn in it, yarn colors in it, and it is a bulky weight yarn. So this cardigan itself, not only is the yarn uh, very thick and very cozy, but I incorporated the waffle stitch into this, and that's what's giving us that waffle griddle look with the fabric. Um, so not only do I love that waffle knit with this tweed chunky yarn, but it was so thick and cozy and comfortable to wear this. And as you guys can see, I'm just wearing a pretty basic tank top from Old Navy, shout out to Old Navy, with my jeans. So, you know, it's just a really comfortable um, outfit that you can pair in lots of different ways. Because this is made in different parts, 
You can absolutely adjust the size of the sleeves, the length of the sleeves, and the overall length of the cardigan. Some of my pattern testers also mentioned with a few of my cardigans that they would really love to see pockets on some of these. I did not add pockets because pockets take time and I really wanted these to be far more approachable. So um, after looking at these particular patterns, because they're produced so simplistically, if you want to add very simple pockets that match the fabric, you can absolutely do that just by looking at maybe the sleeve patterns and creating something that you think is going to look great as, as a pocket. All right, and last but not least is the Wavelength, wavelength Ruana. Um, this is, you, the yarn that I use for this is Bernat Wavelength. Uh, it is a bulky weight yarn. And again, for a lot of the projects that use bulky yarn, I did that again to save time but I didn't just want to create these big, bulky, heavy items. I really only chose yarns that were bigger, that were bulkier, if they had a fantastic color, if they, um, and also if, if they created a fabric that I would want to wear. And so this is one of those yarns that I thought was so beautiful. I love these jewel tones in this particular yarn. And it's a little difficult to see just by looking right here. But here again, I do have kind of this complex stitch. Um, it's kind of a sideways shell. And then I broke that up with just some double crochets uh, with just some chain spaces. And that way, it's not just this big, heavy, solid fabric. So I really love those open spaces uh, because I think that it just helps you to appreciate not only the yarn color, but again, those sideways, that sideways shell fabric that I created here. So guys, if you're not familiar with what a Ruana is, it's like a poncho, kind of. It's like a cardigan that doesn't have sleeves. It's basically a long square or a rectangle in the back. And then the front just has two pieces of fabric that are attached from the back that go to the front. And they are open on the sides. So it essentially kind of looks like... How do I say this? So it's like a block and then two blocks. So it's pretty comfortable to wear. Uh, it's like, again, it's one of those blankets that you can wear out in public. It's one of those things. Um, this is made from the top down. So if you wanna substitute yarn or if you're not sure what size you're gonna make, this is absolutely something that you can get started, measure and see if any adjustments need to be made before you invest a lot of time or yarn into it. So there you guys have it, all 29 of my projects from Crochet in a Weekend. Uh, when you guys click the link in this video description, it will take you to this page on Ravelry. And Ravelry is, of course, uh, linked to Amazon. So you guys can snag this on Amazon if you'd like, or again, anywhere books are sold. And if you want, whenever you click on the link in the video description, you can also search your local library to see if this book is in there. Um, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes before I invest time and money into buying a book, sometimes I just check it out at my library to see if it's something that maybe I just make a few things from and then return it so somebody else can borrow it. Uh, or if it's something that I love and I'm going to make everything in it, I'm going to use it time and time again. So don't feel like you just have to purchase this, although you absolutely can. You guys can also search your local library for a copy as well. Whew. All right, guys, I talked for a long time. So let me give some shout outs to everybody here, like Monica Mercado. Thank you for being here. My friend Tracy Fortner is here. What's up? What's up? One of my amazing best ever pattern testers is here, Amy McKeever. Hello. So excited to see you. And thank you so much for being a pattern tester for this book and so many other things. My friend Dawn is here. Hey, Dawn. Good to see you. Natalia is here. Hello, hello. So nice to see you. Yes, you're catching me live. I'm excited about my book, so I'm having to share all the things. Cheryl Hawk is here. Of course, another one of my amazing pattern testers for this book and so many others. Cheryl Hawk, it is such a pleasure to have you here, lady. And thank you so much for, for all of your help and support on testing for this book. Tammy Peters, another one of my amazing pattern testers and one of my favorite models ever. Tammy Peters, thank you for being here. It is always a pleasure to see you. Oh, Tammy, she was, and sorry, I just talked forever and didn't talk to anyone, but she says, yes, this is a neat construction. Well, she she felt that way about 
at least one thing in this book, but she was one of my pattern testers for, for so many items in here. So guys, actually you can, whenever you click on the link in the video description, whenever you're scrolling through these patterns, um, all of these patterns have projects posted. Every single item that I create, I make sure that I have multiple pattern testers on them. So if you want to see any of these in different yarns, in different sizes, on different body types, on different models, you can absolutely see them here. And Tammy Peters is one of my amazing models. Oh, Tammy Peters says, I made the grige with three strands of worsted weight. I remember that. And I'm so glad that you're saying that now because that's just another example of how versatile these designs are. Again, when you're using simplistic shapes, it's so easy to go, you know what? I don't have a bulky yarn, but I do have a ton of worsted. Let me put two or three strands together and see what happens. And what I love about that is, again, when you're when you're working with simple shapes and when you have all the measurements, it's really easy to see if what you're doing is going to come out as you're planning it. Oh, Tammy says, call it a wrap, not a shawl. I know I I I was trying to get clever with with some of the, you know, while staying within the technical guidelines. There's wraps in here, there's shawls in here. So there's lots of different things. Um, but some things I'm like, all right, I, shawl feels like an old, like nobody wants to make a shawl. That's that's old. Um, but I didn't want to have like 10 wraps. So there aren't 10 wraps in the book, but you know, not everything can be called a wrap. So I had to, I was trying to be pretty versatile. Natalia says, awesome patterns. Thank you. I'm so glad you think so. Natalia says, True Boo Yarn is one of my favorites. Yes, I totally could have used True Boo for half a dozen projects in this book, easy. So if you want to make light items, if you want to wear things, if you want them to be light and lacy, I mean, really, you could use True Boo yarn for so many different projects in this book. Yes, the True Boo top. You could use it for the Amour top, Peaceful Earth shawl, the taupe tee, um, the picnic vest, the date night poncho. I mean, really, you can, you once you find a yarn that you like, like True Boo, there's a lot of items in this book that you could probably, you could have fun with. So, and especially something like True Boo, it comes in so many fantastic colors that if you're like, I love this, I want to make a few things with it, there's definitely some opportunity for you to do that here. Hello, Jerry Sue Tinker. Good to see you too, my friend. Amber is here, says, I love it. I want to make it. It's beautiful. Jerry Sue, sorry, I missed the beginning. That's okay. That's what the replay is for. So if you do miss the live, the replay is just as good. Amber says, is the pattern available by itself or do we need to purchase the book? Some patterns are going to be exclusive to the book for the next year. Um, and that's just so that, um, you know, you guys buy the book, right? Uh, so that the book has a lot of value. So some of these items are only available in the book for the next year, for the first year of the publication. But um, quite a few of the patterns are available by themselves. And you can easily just click on each item to see whether or not you can purchase it. For example, the weekend blanket wrap, when you click on that, my internet is slow, it's taking forever. Come on, internet. Whenever you look at the individual um, designs, you can clearly see whether or not it's available to purchase. For example, this particular pattern, weekend blanket wrap, it is available in my pattern shop, Selena Bacher Crochet, and it's also available in Crochet in a Week in the book. So you can either purchase it alone for the price right here. You can either buy it now or add it to your cart, or you can get it in the book. So either way, either way. Oh, Jerry Sue Tinker says, can't wait to make the book. Donna is here. Angie B is here. Donna loves the taupe tea. I'm so glad. Dawn says, I love the date night poncho. I'm so glad. Yeah, guys, hopefully there, there are a few items in this book that you love. Everything should be able to be crocheted in 12 hours or less, arguably. Some people are faster, some people are slower, but that was the kind of time frame I was going for. Everything in here is very easy to size, very easy to adjust. You do not have to specifically only use the yarns that I mentioned. I tried really hard to use yarns that are accessible. You can find them on the shelves of your local yarn stores or easily online. 
All of them should be yarns that you've heard of or yarns that you should be able to find fairly easily. And I tried to use things that can be very easily sourced and substituted, especially on something like yarnsub.com. Everything in here can be fitted or maybe a little oversized. So there's definitely some flexibility in there. And I tried to make sure that everything in here is made in different pieces that you can easily measure and size and try on as you go. And that way you're not wasting time and you're not wasting yarn and you're walking away with items that you can easily incorporate into a very small wardrobe and basic wardrobe just like mine and have pieces that you love that you can wear year round. All right, the last comment that I see is from Amy McKeever. She says, there are so many great projects in this book. Well, thank you, lady. And especially since you were one of my amazing pattern testers, I'm so glad you said that. All right, guys, 29 projects that you can crochet in a weekend. These are all quick to stitch. There's sweaters, there's tops, there's shawls, and there's more. And I hope you guys click on the link to check it out. Do me one favor, please. After you watch this video, if you could either tag a crochet friend in the comments or share this video in any place where you enjoy crochet, just to get the word out about this book, I'd really appreciate it. All right, everyone. Hope you're having an amazing day. Peace, love, crochet. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.